is going guys welcome back to another video my name is Bailey and I hope you're all doing well today we're going to be doing a video that I also did around this time last year and that's a what's on my MacBook Pro video since last year's video run early towns 15 13 inch with render display I have bought another MacBook Pro and this time it's a Space Gray 16 inch late 2019 model with the 2.6 gigahertz 6 core Intel i7 coffee like refresh processor 16 gigs of RAM 512 gigs of SSD storage and the AMD 5300M graphics. When I bought the computer in August 2020, I did an unboxing and setup video of it. So if you haven't seen the video yet, definitely flip in the top right corner here and give it a watch. Before we get into the video, we'll talk about why I bought the computer and my thoughts of it over the last six months. The MacBook I had before this one, I used it as my daily driver for five years. I used it for schoolwork, general web browsing, graphic designing and video editing in which when I first bought it, I did very light 1080p editing on iMovie. And by the time I got 16 inch, I was well and truly doing 4K editing on Adobe Premiere Pro, in which while I still performed really, really well, it also was starting to get a little slow for my liking and it felt very underpowered when doing the video editing and especially during rendering where it took ages and ages and ages, which led me to buy my fabulous 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you're wondering what I did with the 13 inch after I got the new one, I did not get rid of it. I actually gave it to my dad as he needed a new computer for work and as of today it still runs very 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 well and has no sign of dying whatsoever and he'll have the computer for years to come. When I bought the 16 inch for a whopping $3,800 in August 2020, I was very excited about the high specs and graphics and once I downloaded DaVinci Resolve for the first time and made the unboxing video, I was super impressed with how smooth the editing process was and how fast the rendering time was for a 4K video. Since then, I've used it for my normal daily driver duties as well, and I absolutely love this computer, and I'll keep it for years to come. It has a very attractive design, especially in the space gray finish. The processor is fast, the built-in speakers sound absolutely amazing. The graphics card is awesome, and the video capabilities are limitless for me. However, there are a couple of negatives, but they're all minor, not really big deal. The first one being that the computer overheats an awful lot compared to my old 13 inch, and as a result, the fans are a lot louder too. This particularly happens when my videos are rendering, lots of tabs are open on my web browser, and when it's installing software updates as well. I'm not really sure why this is, but comment down below if you know what causes it. The second issue is with the built-in speakers. While they sound absolutely amazing, I said before, sometimes when you skip through a video on YouTube with the keyboard, the speakers make almost like a popping sound. However, I'm not gonna let these issues affect what I think of the 16-inch MacBook so far, as I think it's the best and most powerful computer I've ever owned. Going back into the video, like the last What's On My Mac video, it will be a little bit different to what other YouTubers do, as aside from showing my dock and launch pad, I'll be showing off other aspects of the computer as well and some of the accessories I have for it. Starting off the left side of the computer, we have two USB-C ports. Down the right side, we have a headphone jack, which I plug my Logitech speakers into. And then we have two extra USB-C ports. I at first hated that the computer did have traditional ports like USB 3 and HDMI ports and stuff. But when I bought my Satechi USB hub, I was finally able to use my accessories such as my hard drive, SD cards and my HDMI cable to plug my 31-inch monitor into. Speaking of the 31-inch monitor, I haven't actually showed it off on the channel yet, so let's talk about it briefly. I actually got the monitor before I got the new computer, and initially I wasn't planning on getting another monitor, but when my parents bought a new Sony 65-inch Android 4K TV for the family room, they decided to move the old Samsung TV into the outdoor area, which is where the Panasonic TV was. Yes, my monitor is another 1080p TV and I decided to get rid of the 22 inch Sphere TV and put the Panasonic TV in its place, which I'm glad I did, as I really love big monitors and the colors are overall much nicer and the text is easier to read. Going back to the computer, when we open it up, we are greeted with the 60 inch retina display, which has a huge resolution of 3072 by 1920, in which the colors are very vibrant, especially with the true tone display, and the text of the screen is very, very sharp and crisp. Overall, it's very nice to look at. We also have the touch bar, in which I don't really use it much aside from when I send emojis on iMessage. That's it, nothing else. Underneath, we have the Magic Keyboard, which is a big improvement over the butterfly keys that's on my sister's 13-inch MacBook Pro. The Magic Keyboard is very nice to type on and has good travel. We then have the Force Touch trackpad underneath, which is huge compared to my 13-inch. Booting up the computer, we agree to my desktop background, which is a picture taken a few months ago on New Year's Eve of me and my two best mates, Jackson and Jude. You may remember them from these videos. 
This Disney DVD is enhanced with Disney's Fast Play. Your movie and a selection of bonus features will begin automatically. Harry Briggs. Harry Briggs. Wait, what? Getting into the dock, which is very minimalist now compared to last year's video where we had lots of things in it. We have to find it. Google Chrome, which has been my trusty web browser for many years, and then DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci is my favorite editing program of all time. The color grain capabilities are amazing. The program isn't bugging like Premiere, and it is much more advanced while being more user-friendly at the same time. Next up, we have the downloads folder and then the bin. Going to the launch pad is a very different story compared to my dock, as there is a lot of more things to describe. We have Google Chrome, the calendar in which I don't use it as I instead use the Google Calendar on my iPhone. We then have the notes app, which I actually use to write the scripts of some of my videos, which may or may not include this one. We then have the app store, FaceTime, and after that we have photo booth, in which I used it all the time as a kid on other people's Macs, Macs and shopping centers, the Macs in the Apple store, and then on my iPad. I used to love making funny videos on the photo booth with my twin sister Lily when we were about seven years old with all the filters and the backgrounds on there. Next up, we have preview and then voice memos which I used on my dad's iPhone 4 as a kid to sing the Post and Pat theme song and totally stuffing up the lyrics while singing it. Post and Pat, Post and Pat, all the birds are singing. The day is just beginning. Potty thinks he's a really happy man. After, we have the Mission Control, Quick Time Player, and then we have the Black Magic folder, which has DaVinci Resolve, and then some other Black Magic apps I haven't used there, but I might try them eventually. Next, we have the Philips Hue Sync app, which I currently have connected to the main lights in my room, but I will eventually connect the rest of my RGB lights to the app. With the Hue Sync app, you can sync your lights to whatever is happening on your computer, such as the video you're watching, the game you're playing, and even making a dance to whatever song you're playing to. If you want more, if you want to know more about my RGB light setup in my room, click the link on the top right corner to give it a watch. After that, we have my most hatred digital assistant, Siri. Hey Siri, get f I won't respond to that. Bruh. Time machine, and then we have some folders. The first one is called sh that I don't need, which is filled with built in apps I don't even use. And then we have the music folder, in which we have music, Spotify, and then Shazam. I don't really use Spotify or Shazam on my Mac, as I use them on my Google Home Mini and on my iPhone 11. So I'm not really sure why I even have them downloaded on here, but hey. It's there for when I need it. We then have the social networking folder in which we have iMessage, Discord, WhatsApp, and then Facebook Messenger. I use these apps for different purposes. iMessage I use on my Mac when I can't be bothered sending messages from my iPhone usually. While I don't play video games anymore, I still use Discord to chat with my mates from time to time. I mainly use WhatsApp to get updates of what's happening at work, and I don't even use the Messenger app on my Mac as I just generally use Messenger while I'm scrolling through Facebook on my web browser because it's much easier and less of a pain in the bum. Next we have the iLife folder, which has iMovie, GarageBand, and then the Photos app. I used to use these apps all the time when I first bought my previous MacBook Pro, but as of now, I use much more advanced software to make my videos, so I don't really use these apps anymore. We then have the system preferences, the unarchiver, the SMC fan control app, which annoyingly doesn't work on this computer yet, the Google Earth Pro app, and then we have VMware Fusion, which is my main virtual machine program that I test out old operating systems on. Some systems I've tested include Windows 98, Windows 2000, Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005, and Windows Vista Ultimate with the Service Pack 2. I have since deleted the ISO files them to save space, but I will download them eventually again to make new tech videos for the channel in the future, as obviously in this channel I upload lots of different things relating to my interests, such as filmmaking, video editing, RGB lighting, technology, and just general things. Next up, we have OBS, which I don't even know why it's on here, as I never use OBS at all. We then have the YouTube video downloader, and then we have Handbrake, which is a video converting app that I used last year when I did a project where my two mates captured videos of them playing Pokemon on their Nintendo Switch. And the video format wasn't supported in DaVinci, so I used Handbrake to convert those clips from MPEG to MP4 files. We then have Hotspot Shield VPN, which I use all the time in high school to watch YouTube videos in class without the teachers knowing. 
And finally, we have the Toggle Trap, which is an app I downloaded very recently. My work mentor, Tom, who is a filmmaker himself, recommended the program to me to keep track on how long it takes for me to edit my videos and other stuff I do on the computer. Well, that is it, guys. That is what's on my MacBook Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna release more tech-related videos in the future, such as what's on my iPhone 11 video and some other new videos in the future, depending how much time I have. So please make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you can. This is Bailey Ethan Rawson, signing out. I'm gonna move this a bit so I can see it better. However, there are a couple of negatives, but there are all However, there are a few. However, they're all. However, there are cute. <laughs> While they sound absolutely amazing, as I said before. Yep. No. The Magic Keyboard is very nice to type on and has good travel. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs>